Okay. Good afternoon, our dear esteemed taxpayers. Happy New Year. We are still at the beginning of the year, and I think best New Year wishes are in order. My name is Arthur Akol. I am from the Domestic Taxes Department, and specifically in the Taxpayer Literacy Unit. We want to welcome all of you to this uh, webinar where we will be discussing IFRS, Electronic Fiscal Receipting and Invoicing Solution. That is the e thing now in regard to tax. And uh, specifically today, we will be talking configuration. Configuration, configuration. That's what we shall be discussing today. I believe at the end of this uh, show, you will be able to appreciate configuration and you'll have no issues pertaining to configuration. I am joined by a colleague that I want to ask to introduce herself and then we will be able to start on uh, configuration. Yes, Hafsa. Uh, good afternoon, our viewers. Good afternoon, Ugandans, and Happy New Year. I think ever since we, we were last with you, we were in uh, 2020. Happy New Year to everybody, and um, we praise the Almighty that we are still alive, we can still serve the nation, and we can still contribute to our fair share in terms of taxes. Uh, as uh, my colleague um, initially introduced a subject matter, Today we are basically going to see how to dissect configuration. Configuration is basically how a client, an IFRIS registered client, can tell us or can put it on the system what they exactly deal in. Is it a good? What kind of good? And in what form? Is it a service? What kind of service? And in what form? So that will basically help us to know what everybody deals in, so that when you come to the second level, if it's a good, if you come to the next level of uh, putting your stock onto the system, you will put your stock onto the system in relation to the configurations that you initially done. So basically that is what we are going to drill on this afternoon, making sure that we basically understand, walk the journey, the IFRIS journey with you, so that we can embrace the initiative that we rolled out on the 1st of July, 2021. Okay, thank you so much, Hafsa. We, like he has said, we are glad to be here. And she has mentioned something quite interesting regarding uh, IFRIS, taking stock of exactly what you do, informing URA that for me, I call Arthur Enterprises or I call Arthur Limited, I sell soap, I sell sugar, I sell whatever that I have to deal with. Or oh, I am a service provider, I have a restaurant, I, I, I do uh, offer catering services. So basically, that is what configuration is. Now, Hafsa, there are quite a number of questions exactly. that people keep on asking uh, regarding IFRIS yes. and especially configuration. Yes. Some people say that, but there, some, of us, some of us are not seeing our goods or the services that we render. Maybe exactly. you can throw some light on w that direction of thing. Thank you, Arthur. Configuration, first of all, needs a bit of patience. One. Second, it needs an understanding of what exactly the company you are configuring goods or services for deals in, deals in how. Let me give you an example. You should know that probably if this is a company that um, basically buys the soda from, say, Century Bottling and is a stockist of some sort. So you will know, first of all, that is a good. And you will know how best to identify that good on the IFRIS platform. And thirdly, you should know how that service or good is referred to internationally. 
Because whatever is on the IFRIS platform has a reference in a, a SCUDA and we use the harmonized system codes that are internationally recognized. So I do not expect one to put in um, just a, a simple name or a, an abbreviation of, say, a product. Let me give you an example. We all drink, um, we all take soft drinks at one point in time. But we are used to calling it soda. Not knowing that the chemists in the, in the, of in the, the labs uh, have the uh, potassium soda, they have the, <laughs> the different sodas that help them in the different laboratory tests. Yes. So we should appreciate that that is called a soft drink. Mm -hmm. So when we don't go wrong with how we are going to filter our items, then configuration shouldn't be that difficult. Mm -hmm. But it has the nitty gritties because uh, you will appreciate when you're doing the configuration. Mm. We have what we call the commodity code. Eventually, it will lead you to the segment name, eventually to the family name, yes. to the class name, and to the commodity name, that commodity that you sell, the mm. one you deal in. So that means we have to be a little patient and know how exactly we can search to get the right item. Mm. And maybe what I would like to, um, what I would like maybe to our viewers to note, when you are searching, don't get an item that is similar to what you do. Because this happens in such a way. As we were coming up with this system, we configured all the tax types onto the system. For example, VAT. For example, excise duty. Mm -hmm. We configured them so that at the point when you're invoicing, this particular item should take the right tax treatment. So here you are just getting something that is similar in use to what you're dealing, or similar in the way it could be called. Not knowing that a particular item could be standard rated and maybe yours is zero rated. So when you just speak not noting that, you may find yourself at, at, at raising an invoice. When your invoice at times may include a tax component where it was not supposed to pick it. To pick it. So that is where we should be very cognizant mm. when we are doing our configurations. Mm. So that we do not have scenarios when you raise an invoice and send it to somebody, then they, they definitely tell you, oh, but the item you raised does not pick VAT. But this one and you wonder picked. why it picks. <laughs> yes. It comes from configuration. <clears throat> Because after registration, the configuration comes into play. Yes. So when you've done a good job at configuration, mm -hmm. trust me, even the stocking in will be, will be easy. easy. Mm -hmm. Because you will only stock in on the items you configured. Yes. Because configuring is telling us that, look here, this is what I deal in. If they are vegetables, I only handle fresh vegetables right from the garden to my place or to my stall, then I sell. Mm -hmm or to my supermarket, then I sell. Mm. But when you pick, start picking a dried vegetable, frozen. a frozen vegetable, uh, those mm. many, many things, they will have a value addition mm. in them. terms of tax. True. So at the end of the day, you may find a, an item picking a tax that it's not supposed to, to pick. Be. That is why I say let us be very cognizant when we are trying to uh, configure. Because in most cases, when you configure, then we will expect you to stock in from that catalog of your configuration. Yes. You have told us you have about uh, maybe 10 items. That you so I expect you to stock in from the 10 items. Mm. When you bring an 11th item, automatically you won't see it on the configuration stocking. Mm. That means go back and configure. and configure the 11th item that you have brought that is oh, okay. new in your product list. Okay. So basically, on configuration, that is what I wanted us to first emphasize mm. before we can maybe see how we go into the details yes. of uh, the configuration. So it's very important for our viewers there yes. to appreciate the fact that for you to be able to configure your goods, you must be sure and of certain, what of that what company or what that individual deals, deals in. in. Because you might go and mess it up. Exactly. It is like telling me that, look here, I deal in maybe um, 
I would say I deal in fruits. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're selling juice. Yes. Then this fruit is no longer the fresh one. Exactly. It has undergone a process. Mm -hmm. And that process automatically will have some value addition. On it. Mm -hmm. If it is um, a factory, then the local excise duty comes in. Yes. Because it's a juice. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand what, what uh, the company is dealing then you can ably start your search carefully. Okay. One other thing I, I, I have noticed is even the way people put in the spellings of these items. They exactly. Need. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Normally when you are um, trying to configure, we have eating places, we have uh, the KFC, the Javas. These people are selling food to us. Yes. But in totality, that is a service industry. True. I do not expect you to tell me you're going to stock in the tomatoes, <laughs> the onions, that. <laughs> no. That means start looking for it, say, in restaurant. Mm -hmm. Spell that restaurant name well yes. when you are starting the journey. Yes. Another is um, we have... Um, we have entities that collect fees on behalf of others. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would say the law firms. Mm -hmm. they have, we have the legal fees, and we may have court filing fees. Mm -hmm. We may have the transport. Yes. We may have other fees that are incidental to the service yes, they service render. But it is not their income. Mm -hmm. That means that entity has to configure a reimbursement of expense. That as they go to court, and file and do what for this client. Mm. This client Hafsa is going to pay back. Yes. It is not my income. Mm. You're just paying me back for having paid for the court fees on your behalf. You're paying me back for having gotten that transport and gone to court mm. to file that case. Yes. So those are reimbursements. So at times the word reimbursement may become a problem <laughs> to some Ugandans and when you put it in, it returns nothing. Yes. You say, I can't see, I can't see. But let's get the spellings, the spellings right. Eh? Mm -hmm. It would be better when we are doing the, re the, the re configurations. At one point somebody was telling me, I'm not seeing yogurt. So I said, how have you spelled yogurt? Exactly. And uh, the, <laughs> the yogurt that they were spelling exactly. was not the one that was, was uh, in the harmonized system. So that I think even um, our if resolution teaches us some English, <laughs> it, it gives us a, a teaser in spellings <laughs> to put our house right in terms of spelling. True. Because you will spell a word which you can't exactly understand yourself. Mm. You can speak it, but when one reads it, eh, says, oh, what is this? So we need to be very, very cautious. Okay. So my, my take away from this whole discussion right now yes. is that for somebody to be able to configure properly, they must understand the business they are doing. Yes. They must be patient. Yes. And then they must be spot on in regard to spellings. Exactly. The moment they fail to meet any of these, yes. then they can easily That give means up. it may not return what you want to see. Yes. And at the end of the day, you'll get frustrated mm. because at times you have many items to actually that you want to configure. Mm. And the reason why we tell you a configuration is done item by item mm. because a client will come, it's a hardware. Don't configure all the nails, general that they are nails. Mm. We have five inch, we have six inch, we have four and a half, we have roofing nails, yes. we have nails of different um, types, types mm. and they serve a different purpose. purpose true. And that means they go for a different cost. Mm. So that means you will enter them differently. differently. Nails to inch, put the amount, the currency mm. and everything, you sell them in cages, then add a similar item. Yes. That means you're going to add another type of nails, mm -hmm. just like that. The reason why we want clients to do it in that way, mm -hmm. you don't know the client who is coming tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I will come when I don't want just nails yes. plain. I want six inch, maybe five kgs. I want roofing nails, two kgs. Then I want other items. Mm -hmm. So that means it will be simpler for one who is invoicing to just search and pick on the item. Okay. But when you put nails, mm. you, the business owner, you are going to get 
a problem. Mm. Which problem? Mm. You won't be able to balance mm. your stock off well. Yes. Because when you're purchasing these nails, say from, <coughs> excuse me, mm. when you are purchasing them, say from Seroma or say from Viva, or Rufi, it or was very clear for them, they were clear. Mm. Nails these inches this much. Mm. Reason why they do it like that. They want the, to balance their stock clear. Yes. That how much did I bring in from the factory? Mm -hmm. I brought in this quantity of this inch of nails. Yes. Then how much has been sold? So this is a balance I do expect. Mm. So when you lump up everything, first of all, you're confusing yourself. And at the end of the day, you won't be able to balance up, up your stock. True. And if you're not able to balance your stock, that means uh, there will be some losses that go through somewhere where you can't mm. detect. So please, uh, let's try to see that we configure item by item. Yes, and <coughs> to have them configured correctly. Exactly. Now, I know that out there, viewers, some viewers have already made this, have already configured. Yes. To the system, but probably after the end of this show, they'll realize that they made mistakes. Exactly. When they were configuring. Yes. How do they go about correcting these errors? Does the system allow them to correct the errors that they made? Definitely the system is flexible. It allows you to correct an error. Let me imagine I am speaking to a client who has already configured. Yes. That means this client has a login credentials, that's the TIN and password. Mm. This client knows how to get the OTP. Yes. So once they've gotten the OTP they're on the IFRIS platform page, let me imagine this client is there right now. Mm. And I'm just going to take you through how you can make an amendment on a configuration that maybe had an error. Yes. As you log in on your left-hand side of your screen, mm. uh, we want to make a live demo here of how basically we can show you how to how to make an an amendment if you've made any mistake mm. on your configuration uh, hold on a while we are trying to get a page we are trying to get a page um as we are trying to get um, a page of uh, what can help us in our, I'm trying to log on, so that we're on the same page with you, the clients. Um, I'm trying to input my TIN, as uh, you equally did. Yes, I'm able to see there. That's what they are seeing, yes. I'm trying to log on. I'm also trying to put in my OTP. I guess uh, you equally have an OTP there that you got or you've just gotten by initiating for it as you've been doing normally. So once we are, we are good with the OTP, let me hope we all have the same screen. That is the IFRIS um, portal page. Here I'm trying to show you how we can amend a configuration probably that we made. So you just go straight to stock in. Eh? Stock management, I think we are seeing the same thing. Just hover your cursor quickly to hover your cursor quickly to goods and services configuration. Let me take it there and you click. So and as you land there, this is a pop-up window that comes. So as it comes, let me first close it. So we have the same thing right here. So I am going to just make a quick search. And now the system has given me probably what I configured in. Let me just imagine I had some error that was made on maybe um, maybe rent. I configured some rent here in Bogolobi. I'll click on the line item 
just like this once, it has activated the, the buttons up. We have modify. And when it comes here, probably you had, um, you wanted to change the currency in which eh, you are going to bill in. So feel free to change it maybe to USD. Maybe still you needed to change the amount eh, because in most cases entities are very, very cautious of the amounts. So if it's USDs, definitely they have to change the unit price and put the right figure. So there I'll have done one modification on the line item where I feel I need to change so that I move with what I agree with, then I submit. At the end of the day when I submit, it will go back in line where it was. I think now you're realizing that I have changed that line item to 200, 2,000 US dollars. Mm. So that is how we modify a configuration that we have done earlier that maybe had an error and we need to put it right. Eh? Mm. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now, the system is indeed flexible. Yes. Is it possible for us, we had earlier we had discussed about configuring and being accurate in your configuration yes. specific. Is it possible for us to show our viewers out there how, for example, I would do maybe configure nails, like we talked about nails, and they are in different uh, sizes, exactly. different, mm. uh, uh, do, I, do I call them length? Are they meters? Okay, different they are inches. inches. Okay. <laughs> they are in different inches. They are inches. Mm. That uh, we, we we have. Yes. Let me try to see how best we can now. Uh, we can walk that journey with our clients here. Um, I wanted to bring a, a page where I can uh, I can show you the different. Here, the reason I'm bringing up such a page, eh? uh, I'll show you where the goods and services template is. Eh? So when we are trying to configure say nails, I'll go to my commodity name here. I, I use a drop down. Eh? You see where they search. Let me just put there the word nails eh? and see what it returns for me. You see we have cup nails, finishing nails, roofing nails, wire nails, upholstery nails, and all that. Let me imagine I want to configure uh, roofing nails eh? because roofing nails are familiar to most of us those are the nails that are used on the iron sheets when we are roofing mm -hmm. so let me just go back here add product code then I'll just do here my brows but here I'm not going to put a filter that nails eh? I have simplified my life with a code eh? it is 31162 Double zero five. So I'll click on go and I see what it returns me. You see manufacturing component supplies, eh? you see hardware, you see nails, you see roofing nails. I think we are doing what our clients eh, are watching. And here, once you agree with the roofing nails, you will just go and save. But here, you need to give it a code. Eh? This code normally comes from you. You can maybe say roofing nails. Eh? And we give it one, something like that. Mm -hmm. But clearly, we want you to define the goods name here. What do you want to appear on that invoice when it comes out after invoicing your client? Maybe here you're going to say roofing nails. I don't know if they have inches. Maybe you can say these are two inches. Sorry. If they have uh, inches... Maybe here we can say two um, inches. And which currency do we sell them in? Ordinarily, I think hardwares are selling in Uganda shillings. That's your UGX. The package measure. Normally, they go in kgs. So we could say we are picking a kg. The unit price maybe for these nails, roofing nails, let me say if your roofing nails are 10,000 per kg, you leave it at that. 
<coughs> so the difference you will find at configuration, when you're configuring a good, the system will ask you for a low stock alert. Unlike a service that is intangible, you will not have the low stock alert provision. Low stock alert is basically asking you that when do you want a system to notify you when your roofing nails stock has gone low. Probably you would say, if I'm remaining with only 5 kgs, let the system pause an alert. But we are all aware in our hardware business. I may say I'm selling in kgs. Then maybe somebody comes, a client comes and says, uh uh, the part I'm going to work on does not need a whole kg. Maybe try to give me a half. You can maybe go here, piece measure unit, and maybe say that you need half a kg. So here we could say maybe this is a kg. Then we could say one kg maybe has, um, here we could say half a kg. Half a kg here would be represented by, can we say 500 grams? 0 0.5. Hmm? I don't know whether the grams are here. Okay. Let me look for grams eh? and see. But my grams, kilograms, it's still a kilogram. I think here we need to put something like half a kg. So for this, it may not actually bring out the piece measure. We are going to use it for an item that is uh, more solid. Eh? So once we are done with our configuration here, do not forget to check on VAT information. Reason why we need to check on VAT information, you need to be in agreement with what is on the system. As I had earlier said, we mapped all the tax laws eh, onto the system, especially VAT in this respect. You need to know whether the item you're configuring is standard rated. You may think it is exempted, whereas our act is very clear, it's a standard rated item. Because once an item is not in schedule two, that is for exempt, is not in the third schedule for zero rated, then automatically there is no other choice, it has to be standard rated. Then the system equally tells you this is not a service, likewise it is a good. So for that section, there is nothing much you'll add there. It is just for your own reading. And once it portrays what you don't agree with, eh? We advise you not to first finish the configuration. Probably get back to us and we see why your system is behaving in a funny way. Or we see where the information gap is, then we see how to create harmony. So here once we are comfortable with what our VAT has done for us, then definitely under excise information, this one may not be there right now, then we continue. In the event that we have different nails, you will go to add similar good. If you don't have um, other types of nails to configure, then we can submit. Let me give you an example here. I'll say add similar, and you see what it will do for us. It has left the commodity code there. The reason why we put the ad similar, we do not want you to go back in the hassle of searching and looking for the commodity code and the commodity name. So here that means I'm giving you a leeway to come back and configure the, the other type of roofing nails you may have. Maybe I have roofing nails two that I brand as two. Then here, the full description, I would say roofing nails, then maybe they are four inch, depending. I'm just giving an example of what may happen. If they are the four inches, still we are maintaining the currency at UGX, then here it's still a kg. Then um, here the price for these ones, probably they're at 8,000 depending. I'm just imagining these are not actual figures that exist, then uh, low stock alert, maybe you would say if I have about five cages of uh, my roofing nails of four inch, let the system cause an 
alert or a notification so that I can contact my supplier to supply me. This is just a check for you, the business owner. Then still you go to VAT information in the same manner we did once we are in agreement. Then let me assume all the nail types under roofing are done. Then here I will submit. That means we have, you see we have added the roofing nails there, the four inch, the roofing nails, the two inch. That is how we configure particular items. Okay. I like the add similar good option because if, for example, I am a depot, I am selling soda. Exactly. I don't have to keep on going back. Exactly. You just put the different brands you have. Yes. Exactly. The yeah. only thing would be probably the measurement. Mm -hmm. The 300 mils, yeah. maybe if you have the big bottles, I don't know whether they are 500 or what. There's maybe that could five be. Exactly. Milliliters. Exactly. So the ad similar good option is good. And I want to believe that our people, our clients out there are going to, to make use of it. Now, there are people who keep on asking questions. And they say that, okay, it, it is true the system is flexible. Yes. I can indeed modify the goods that maybe I've made errors on. But imagine a situation where I have modified goods maybe this month I thought I would deal in plastics. I put in the plastics. Then somehow I overhaul the business in February. Exactly. And then I'm now maybe have shifted to soft drinks. Yes. What happens to me? <laughs> Do I... Do I go and delete the items that I go Before figure? even the deleting, eh? yes. I would like the listeners to get it clear. Mm -hmm. Because before IFRIS, we had a system that was running. There is a way we were doing business. I urge that client to first make an amendment in the system. Okay. Because when you make an amendment, you are basically telling us that, look here, I am no longer dealing in soda. I have started dealing in mattresses. That means me here back in the system, I am going to change the IZ codes I assign to your business. That, that I'm looking at you in line with those in mattresses, those in beddings, those in what. So that is the first step. Once that is done, because that will help me harmonize what you have on your teen details mm -hmm. with what you're going to put in IFRIS. Yes. Before we get the integration in the two, at least that would help both of us. So once you're done with that, and you're clearly coming to your IFRIS, let me give you an example here. You said you're dealing in nails, mm -hmm. but you are doing away with the nails. Yes. Or you're doing away with uh, one of the items you configured. So I want, um, I want uh, clients to see how, what you can do. Let me imagine I had some Fanta here. Yes. I do away with the drinks. I'm no longer interested. What do I do? I will go to my Fanta here. When I click on it, it will activate, disable. I am trying to disable that item. Mm. Say that I don't expect anybody in my company to <coughs> invoice it because I'm doing away with that particular stock. Say I've sold it all and there is nothing. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect any error to come that my staff have invoiced what is not there. Mm -hmm. So what I need to do after the disable. I will come back still to my Fanta because now it is disabled. Mm -hmm. I click on it again. Then it will activate my delete. Yes. Then I will comfortably delete that line item among the line items I have. Let's wait a bit. I think the internet is um, not doing good for us. Let's wait and see. Uh, it's telling me this good and service is in use. Eh? Do you know why it's telling me that mm -hmm. there is stock that I stocked in against it? Yes. The fact that I didn't have any stock, that means as I clear my stock, the system is intelligent. It is reading some stock I stocked in mm -hmm. on this good. But let me give you an example. 
If they were nails, I haven't yet stuck them in. Yes. Let's try it with nails. I'll go to my nails, then I will disable, disable my nails. It. Because I imagine I haven't stocked in the nails. Mm. Then I will go back to my nails again, and I delete these nails, and I see. Have you seen the nails two inches has gone? Yes. So my clients are down there know you cannot delete an item that has existing stock mm. that IFRIS has registered. Mm. That means it, it, it should create sense. Mm. If you have stock, then why should you delete the line item? Yes. That means I should see you invoicing this stock and selling it off in IFRIS such that if the stock item is depleted, then you can come here and delete it, and uh, you can come here and disable it, yes. and finally you delete it. Okay. Mm. Now, during the configuration, because we have now gotten to a point where we agree that uh, configuration is telling you RA exactly what, what you're, you're dealing. dealing, yes. And you have sampled for us even how a configuration is done. Yes. We have to be as specific as possible. If I'm dealing in nails, I must be able to separate. Which type of which type, nails? The types because of nails they have that different purposes. Exactly. They serve. Now, somebody, for example, is a supermarket. Mm, exactly. A big supermarket, say, Masaka. Yes. Or in Mbarara, or in Soroti, wherever they are. Mm. And uh, they have so many items. Yes. Now, I've been watching you, showing us how to keep on adding the items, add similar item at this. Yes. Is there a provision for me, a dealer, in uh, very many items, say in a supermarket, I have over 2,000 items I'm dealing in. Yes. I may be dealing in soda, but I'm dealing in Fanta, I have Mivinda, same sizes and the like. Yes. Is it possible for me to, down, to, to, to fill in this, capture this good somewhere, and then probably upload in the yes, system? Yes, the like IFRIS system yes. or the solution mm. came to address one of those pains. Yes. And that is one of the pains. Yes. How do you get there? Okay. Let me imagine my screen eh, mm. is showing the clients how to get there. Mm. I want us to embrace, we are all at a certain page logged in somewhere. Mm. Let me imagine I am going to configure. But this is a client who has uh, many, many items. I will just go and click on add product code. Yes. But when it gives me this, I am not going to browse products right now. Mm. I am going to click on batch import. Yes. When I get my batch import, uh, I am going to download a template here. Yes. As we normally download the return templates, eh, we are clear of that. When I download the return template, it has downloaded down here. I think you see how it appears. And normally as we do, you enable the content eh, so that you can be able to type in. Mm. You see it has all these fields eh, that we looked at when we are configuring. Mm. That means you can save this template somewhere. Do some good work off the system. Yes. When you do some good work, make sure you have captured all the items, mm. then save it on the system. Yes. You will just come back in the same page as we did here, and you are going to upload mm. the same. Mm. The upload button is here. Yes. Let me imagine you put it somewhere, mm. upload it here, then when you upload it, select it, then finally upload it. It will go into the system with all the items. This creates is because you cannot be logged on for longer mm. because it has an implication. Yes. It has an implication of uh, internet connectivity mm. because you need to be on the system. Just imagine now I'm on the system mm. supported by internet. It may take me about two hours to fill that particular template. Mm. Don't you think it's not cost saving? Yes. So just download it and keep it aside somewhere, get your time, capture all the items you deal in, then capture the way you sell them, mm. are they in cages, are they in which kind of packs, mm. and what amount, and what currency. Yes. So just put it there then, save it maybe on your desktop. As we do for a return, mm. then come back here, you will select and browse, and look for it on your desktop, finally you upload. Then you will have gotten everything 
in there. Now, maybe going back to the template, if you can uh, click on uh, the template that you downloaded earlier. Uh, let me see where I can get the template. If I haven't closed it, let me hope I haven't closed it. That one. It's here. That, yes. Mm. Now, the commodity category, if yes. I clicked on that rectangle one, uh, yes. there, yes. there is no drop down for me to choose. Yes. The, the codes. I have to go back to the system and get the code from there. Where I started from, mm. I am going to show them where you go. Yes. And you get the commodity category because these are many commodities mm. that would require you to have the commodity category. Unlike these others where you see currency, mm. there's already a drop down for you to choose. Yes. Mm. Here it does not have it. Mm. That means it calls for one going back. Mm. Let me see how we can go back and see how we can guide that client who is looking at me. Yes. And by the way, when you're on the IFRIS page, you just click in the logo. The logo just helps you to refresh the page. Okay. Let me imagine we are seeing the same page that I am seeing. Down here on your right, we see where there is document. Let me hope we've all seen the document. Mm. Just go down, we see where there is good, goods category form. Then we have goods and services mm. details here. When you get this goods and services, when you download it, it will appear like this. It's coming. Let us hold on a bit. It appears like this. But when it appears like this, it needs to be minimized because it is huge. And we will see the search. I think you see it has a segment name, the family, the class, the commodity code and the commodity name. Mm. So let me just give um, clients a quick, a quick one here where it is compressed. We just need to compress it because it's a little it's wider. So here, let me imagine I am searching for, I just go to the commodity name. This is a drop down. I have the select here. What do you think we are searching for here? Probably water. Uh, bottled water. Bottled water. Okay. Let me first see where my, where my water is taking me. Hey, sorry. Here, water is wide. We needed to put the bottled We needed to put the bottled water here and see how our search. I think you see bottled water dispensers and accessories mm -hmm. here. So if we take this code, yes. let me imagine that code is um, 4810 <coughs> Let's imagine it's for the bottled water. And I am trying to see how I'm going to take it this end eh? mm. and um, try make a search. Just imagine this is a live template. You told me you had you wanted to see how it works on the other template. Yes. So I have this template here. So here I may have um, four eight one zero. This is a product category. No, I have to put it where the code is. Mm. Sorry. It is 4810171711. And mm. So it is supposed to populate something here that um, the goods name uh, didn't bring out. Okay. What happens here is we fill in these codes as they are. Yes. Because this is going to be a template that we are going to upload, then upload on the system. The fiscalization of everything will be done back end. Oh. But if I'm to use this same code, if I wanted to take it here to show my clients that look here, when I am going to do the configuration of water, I start here. Let me take here the code and we see what it has to return for us. One zero. One seven eleven. So I think you've seen how it has returned uh, the institutional food services equipment, food and beverages, uh, 
than bottled water dispensers and accessories. Mm. So in the event that you agree with um, this, then definitely you will click on save, then you continue your configuration. So that is how we try to search for the different items that we deal in. There are those who deal in the containers, those dispensers for water, mm. and there are those who come to buy the actual water mm. with the dispenser. With the dispenser. So it depends on what you are dealing in at that particular time. Mm. That will take you there. Okay. Wow. This uh, is quite interesting and intriguing because we are even we are even given so many codes. Exactly. Then you just go there and type in, and then you choose your own, and then you take it into the the template that you have downloaded, and then put everything, put there, everything there. Then you up save it. Then you select, attach mm. it as we normally do. Mm. Then you upload on the system. Okay. Mm. Now configuration. Is it uh, does somebody do it more than once? If they get Con it correctly, for example, do they have to keep on doing it? No, configuration could, should be done once huh? mm -hmm. if one is doing a perfect job. Yes. What comes after in the course of your doing business, probably if you need to revisit configuration, maybe there is a modification you are trying to make. Maybe you're trying to disable a particular item mm -hmm. that you are no longer trading in yes. and ultimately deleting it. Mm. But if, if that is not the reason, then it has to be done once. Unless uh, you have brought a different item in, in your product line. Mm. You have introduced a different service in your services line. Mm. That is why you need to go back and reconfigure that item. Because as I had told you, this is a chain. Yes. Once you don't configure this particular mm. service or good, mm. then ultimately when it's a good, when I come to stocking in, the system cannot see it. Then where will I put this stock electronically in the system? Because it doesn't have any corresponding configuration that was earlier made if it's a good. Same applies to a service. Once I do not configure it here, then when I come to raising an invoice, the system cannot feel any service. It can't see it. That means there is nothing for me to invoice. Yet it's very clear. Yeah, on 1st January, we rolled out the e-invoicing. Mm -hmm. That means whoever is that registered is expected to be issuing electronic invoices. Mm -hmm. And for those who are not VAT registered, who had registered for IFRIS, it is okay because ultimately everybody in business has to be on IFRIS. Mm. Just because we are doing it in a phased approach, eh? yes. so that we don't co cause confusion in the public. Mm. So what happens to such a person who is not VAT registered, mm. but is on IFRIS? Those are the people who will be generating e-receipts out of their system. Mm. So the only distinction is an e-invoice has a VAT component in it, whereas mm. an e-receipt does not have any VAT or tax component in it. Okay. Talking about VAT, somebody may wonder, at configuration we put prices yes. for the goods. Yes. Do I have to capture that price? That Should it be VAT? Should VAT be included in that price? Or it shouldn't? Um, what happens at configuration? Mm -hmm. The price you capture is the price you expect to sell mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. And that price should be inclusive of tax mm -hmm. where applicable. Yes. Let me just show you, when we go back on my same system, I'm going to show you when I am trying to configure. If I'm trying to configure, say I've gotten everything here, the commodity code, where we have unit price, let me hope we are seeing it, that it is tax inclusive where applicable. The tax that normally applies here is the VAT, the value added tax. So once the value added tax is input in this component, that means when you're invoicing, it will be well for you to invoice that client who has come to you because you have already incorporated the tax component in the amount you're going to sell to him. Because what happens if you don't incorporate it that equally means that when you sell me at a certain price, Uganda Revenue Authority makes an assumption that all you sell is 
VAT inclusive mm. because it's very clear you're just an agent who collects VAT on behalf of government and you pass it on to URA through your monthly return that you give us by the 15th of every preceding month. Okay. So that is quite interesting for you, our viewers, to know because sometimes people configure and they don't put the VAT element. Exactly. It just puts the price without mm -hmm. configuring in the VAT element. Mm -hmm. But now it is clear that whatever price you are putting at configuration must include the VAT element. And maybe just to also add more light, more emphasis, this month of February, whatever return that is coming in must come in with fiscalized document number. Am I right? Yes. Without a fiscalized document number, you may not be in position to upload your return for the month exactly. of January, specifically the VAT return, because like my colleague loudly said, we went live on 1st of January 2021, and uh, we expect people to already be uh, in good books with IFRIS. We expect our people out there to already be issuing the fiscalized exactly. invoices and the fiscalized uh, receipts. Yes. Now, there are people who keep on asking configuration, configuration. I am, say for example, in the service industry. Exactly. I am uh, in construction. Yes. And then I go and buy items from roofings. Mm. Go to roofings, I buy iron sheets, I buy those iron bars, I go to Seroma, I buy the cement. What happens? Do I have to configure even those items that are bought from this? Uh, what happens in the construction industry? Mm. Uh, once you buy the cement and you are going to come and resell the cement mm. in its form, yes. you need to configure that particular item. Mm. But if that mm. cement is incidental to the service you are going to render, say you are going to construct a road, mm. that is already a service. Yes. I do not expect you to go, to, I don't, don't expect you to stock in that particular item. Mm. Just maintain it in your expenses book as you have been doing before IFRIS. Yes. What I expect you to configure now is the service of road maintenance or new road, um, um, or, or new road works. Yes. Let me give you an example. I want uh, my clients to see how we can get there. Let me try to configure I go to my ad products. I just browse here. Let me imagine I am um, in roads. Huh? Let me say I put roads. Huh? So here, if I put roads, it has um, a lot. Yes. I will go to maybe building and facility construction and maintenance, the highway construction services, infrastructure building and surfacing, then maybe seal coating of roads, uh, highways and parking lots. Is this what I do? Mm. Seal coating is when you put in those, those particular patches in the road. Yes. That is seal coating, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Highways is when you do the highways. The, these roads we normally show our clients that it's because of you that we have got the other highway road too maybe Masaka to Chivoga, they've just done the Chivoga Road. Those are the so-called highways mm. that are mandated to be handled via mm. our taxes we collect. Mm. Because the smaller roads within our municipal councils and everything are supposed to be looked at by the local government within there. True. So central government looks at the highways eh, and parking. So in the event that you do one of these, eh, Sealing, coating of roads, highways, and parking lots, you can say, I agree to this. 
then you highlight it, then you save. Then here you can say highway road construction. I'm just giving it a code. Mm. Then here you say highway in full road. Uh -huh, that's road construction services. Because this is a service eh, that is intangible. We are not going to stock in, but we need to configure. So I am looking at um, UGX is the currency that normally applies. Eh? But it is well in the event that you get um, a, contract. a contract that it specifies is. it in any other currency. Mm -hmm. You can come and modify, and uh, you can modify at the time of invoicing so that you actually quote what um, you the person who gave you the job needs to see on the invoice. Package measure. Here normally for a service it's a little difficult because uh, there are many parameters that will lead to that invoice amount. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the duration. We are looking at where the road is constructed. We are looking at how many kilometers they are. So for this, in the event that you have, uh, uh, your currency is in UGX, you can just select one UGX. Eh? Just for this, it will work for you mm -hmm. because a service is a little different from a good. The unit price here, probably for starters, maybe you put something like five million. You can just maintain it just for purposes of um, uh, purposes of configuration. Then with VAT here, you go and check. It is a service, yes, and it carries the 18% component. Mm -hmm. Then we submit. That means we have configure that particular service. So that is how we do for services eh? mm. that may be a little tricky for our clients who need to know what exactly they go for. Yeah. Maybe the other issue I would like to emphasize on configuration, maybe could go for rent. Mm. Normally we have a commercial rent and residential rent. Yes. In this line, residential rent does not pick the 18%. Mm. Residential rent is basically me or you who builds houses or structures for one to sleep in. Yes. The activity that is going to be done there is residing there, mm. sleeping there. But in the event that you have a structure where I come to do business or to further business, for example, the malls, the arcades, eh? mm and these other small shops, eh? then there that will qualify for commercial rent. Yes. And definitely as it qualifies for commercial rent, these are most of the people who are VAT registered. So I expect by now, for January, they must have issued fiscalized invoices to their clients. Mm. Because it all suggests that the return they are going to give us needs to be supported by a fiscalized invoice. So that is where I wanted to emphasize more so. Let me give an example in Kampala. If you have an arcade, you have a mall, you have shops that you let out for people who come to further business or do business, then by now you must have issued fiscalized invoices for the month of January because those are the same invoices that have to help you validate Yes. your return and eventually submit it to us so that it doesn't come in late and secondly it will not get that penalty for filing it late or even not filing at all okay. now you you earlier mentioned about e-invoice and e-receipt yes and you said the e-invoice is for the vat registered yes now so the e-receipt is for those who are not vat registered Yes, because we have some of them. Mm. They have registered. Yes. And do you know why they have registered? These are people who do business with the big companies. Yes. And when you're doing business, for example, let me give you an example. You could be doing business with um, MTN and you're supplying. Mm. But by now what they need is uh, give me a physicalized document. They don't want any other thing. Don't tell them, you know, they haven't gazetted my category mm. and uh, I am waiting. Mm. You know, with business, we only have to be smart. Yes. It costs you nothing to register for IFRIS. True. And we are open, we entertain whoever is registering. However, emphasis is being put on VAT registered VAT clients. But even though you're not VAT registered, we have a number of them huh, 
that are registering because they need to continue in business. Because the other entity giving them business will need a physicalized receipt for their case. True. Exactly. Now, if I am not VAT registered, yes. I was seeing earlier in the system when we were capturing the different items. Yes. Does the system charge VAT on me when I'm issuing the receipt? Absolutely no, because uh, this system reads on to your registration. Okay. This TIN that you logged in with for your company, does it have VAT as a tax type? Yes. The reason why even IFRIS is there, we do not want clients to collect a tax that they will not be able to pass on to URA. URA. Because what people have been doing, whenever you go and to purchase something, say in a shop, they'll tell you, oh, you know taxes, we have VAT, we have this. <laughs> that is why this dress is going for 200000 yes. But have you ever checked where they have registered? Mm -hmm. They are not. But that is a reason to maintain the other price they have affixed to that commodity. Mm -hmm. So here it's an exchequer. It checks you. If you're not VAT registered, yeah. then why collect the VAT? True. VAT will only be for those who are, who are VAT registered. registered to collect it because we, we know there is a mechanism mm -hmm. how they are going to pass it on to us on a monthly basis by filing that return that is designed to be filed by the 15th of the preceding month. Okay. Now somebody says, you know, this, we, our, these mothers of ours who sell second-hand clothes, they yes. get a whole pain. Yes. <laughs> so they are wondering, how do they configure? Mm. Because you get that bell, there is a shirt, there is a dress, Mm. There's a trouser, there is, you know. Mm. So how do they configure all of those items? When they are configuring those items, yes, they are going to just go and configure clothes. Okay. And the description under those goods will be mixed. Because by the time they get that bill, mm. they don't know how many shirts will be there. <laughs> they don't know how many, it depends. So for that matter, mm. for starters, until they streamline, because with the bells they are confusing. Mm -hmm. At times you'll find somebody who will tell you this is a bell for shirts. As they bring in, they are baby's clothes. True. And these people are going to sell a piece. So I expect them to configure just a piece mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And it depends how much of the piece go for. Yes. However, to somebody who is importing the bell, I expect that person to configure the different denominations of the bells. Mm -hmm. How? These bells I have brought from wherever are for boys' shirts. These bells I have brought from here are for girls' cuts. Because it's very clear for them to balance their stock. Yes. Because they have many bells. When you just say bells, at times you may get confused. Mm -hmm. But for these nitty gritties, the small ones that put the clothes somewhere, maybe on the floor, it may be difficult for you to go configuring each and everything for starters. Yes. They could say a mixed bell for second-hand clothes. Okay. That would be better for them as we are trying to streamline for their particular sector. Okay. Mm. Okay. Somebody is also asking here, by the way, we, we want to hear from you. What, what challenges do you face out there that you feel we, 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 we should address? Exactly. We want to hear from you, so keep the questions coming in. Send as many as you can, such that uh, we can be able to help you address some of the challenges that you're facing. Now, somebody is asking, how do I amend stock in management after I have uploaded or submitted the stock? That means somebody has stock in. Yes. But we are amending mm. stock in what kind of arrangement? Mm. The stock has gotten a problem. Mm -hmm. Let me imagine it has gotten a problem. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So my, my, my listeners and viewers... Huh? Let us go and see, my listeners and viewers, let's go and see how we can amend the stock. Huh? We are just going to stock management. Huh? Just hover your cursor quickly. You see where there is stock? Huh? We have stock adjustment somewhere. Let's imagine we are all clicking in the same manner. Then here, the system has to first ask you, the stock you're amending, is it for your headquarters? Or is it for the other branch that you registered on IFRIS? Mm. So it should be clear for you here to help guide the system. Yes. So here, let me imagine it's for my headquarters. 
And we need reasons. What has happened to this talk? Mm. Why do we actually need to amend it? The stock. Maybe I would say it has gotten damaged, or maybe it's expired if it's a drink, maybe personal use, or maybe mm. I've taken it to use it as a raw material. Mm. And uh, after giving the reason, I'll just go down here. I will go to add. When I click on add, it will give me such a pop-up window. But it is basically telling me, click on select and see what you have in stock that you can amend. Mm. That is where I said if you didn't stock in, then the system will return nothing. True. So here I stocked in my Fanta. Let me just go to my line item Fanta. It's the one I want to amend in terms of stock. stock. Mm. I will confirm here. So here... I said I have some either damaged items under the soda. Mm. But initially my book value, my book stock for soda Fanta are 50 cartons. Yes. Now the system is asking us how many are damaged. Maybe they are broken, maybe they are not in sellable condition. Mm. Maybe they are about 12. So the system has already auto-computed for you the current stock or the balance. So in the event that you had any narrative here, you need to tell us something. Why you feel you need to amend, maybe narrating, it's damaged, it got broken, and you can type anything mm -hmm. there that satisfies the activity you have conducted. Then we click on OK. Mm -hmm. I think you see it returns a line item that tells you that you configured your Fanta and you're selling in a carton. And you said your carton is 30,000. Yes. And the stock you had was 50. However, you're reducing it by 12. That is what you see in the adjust quantity. Mm. Then, this is the adjust amount. It's the equivalent of the 12 cartons that are not saleable. Yes. That is what it means. Then your balance is 38. Mm. So in the event that we are comfortable there, we will click on OK for that particular adjustment to save itself. Mm -hmm. And when it serves itself, you will need to confirm. If it has. How do you confirm? Mm -hmm. You will first go here, still in stock management, and you'll go to stock inquiry. Here you're inquiring from the system to know the stock levels of the different items you have. Mm -hmm. So that means here we'll need to do a little of a search. I think you see the line items it has brought. It is still Fanta, but it's telling us uh, that at the headquarters, where you had the 50 cartons, uh, you reduced it by 12 that were damaged, you have 38. Mm. Still at uh, your, your branch, at Nakasero that you had, initially indicated in the IFRI system, you have 30, a balance of 30 cartons of the same item. Mm. So that is where I wanted my <coughs> clients to feel that way we can adjust our stock. Okay. Now somebody is also asking a question that is similar to the construction question that we raised earlier. Yes. But this one is a restaurant. Yes. And they are saying that as restaurants, they go out there, they buy dodo, they buy katunkuma, <laughs> they yes. buy chicken, mm. they buy so many things. Yes. Now, when they are configuring, mm. do they have to configure these particular things they bought or they configure what comes up they are going after to they have prepared? The final item I expect to see on that e invoice mm. or that e receipt. Yes. How? Let me just do a small demo here. I go to uh, stock management, hoover my cursor to goods and services, then I'm going to browse. I am a restaurant. Let me try to search. It has reduced my search. If I'm a restaurant, on the fields I have here, the most likely is travel and food and lodging and entertainment. I click on that arrow. Please, you click on the arrow, not on the line item. It has given me my restaurant and catering. Mm. 
I will still click and it will give me details. Is it an eating and drinking establishment? Is it a bouquet and catering services? Are they cafeteria? Is it a carry away and take away? I think you see our Javas and our the takeaways we have here have a provision that KFCs that our children like. So you will just go here. Delivered meal services, do they deliver? Professionally prepared carryaways. So our takeaways could be here in the professionally prepared carryaways. Then I say save. So here I'm starting my journey of configuring. I have a number of items. I'm looking at my menu. Mm. What do I sell? Let me say chips and chicken. Yes. Here. I'm starting the journey. So here I am going to say chips, chicken. I think you see mm -hmm. chips, chicken. Then the currency is UGX. When I am charging here, I charge a plate. Then here my chips and chicken goes for maybe 18,000, depending. Mm -hmm. I'm just imagining. Eh? So if it goes for that, I'll go in VAT. It's a service, you see. It has 18% component. Mm -hmm. So whatever I put under unit price, on an assumption it has an 18% component mm -hmm. within it. So here in the event that I have others, I am a takeaway. I will say add similar good. Then I will come back and say chips plain. Mm. Because normally some come and say chips, chips plain. plain. Then here I will maintain it at UGX. Then here it will be, I just type a plate, mm. then the plate will come. Then my chips plain maybe is at 6,000. Depending. Once I am done with all the, the types of menus I maintain, mm -hmm. I will submit. I think we have gotten an idea mm -hmm. of how we can kickstart the configuration journey if we are in a service industry. Yes. So for the service industry, you do not configure the raw materials. Exactly. Unless you are selling them directly. Unless you're going to tell me that when you go to Nakasero, you will come and sell that purple cabbage as it is. Mm. By the way, the, 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 the vegetables are there. Yes. For clients who are listening to us and um, may not know the vegetables are there, let me just make a quick, uh, a quick search here and just type in uh, a cabbage. And we see we have... Um, a variety of cabbages here. They will still fall under the foods and beverages. I think you see fresh vegetables here. Mm -hmm. We see the cabbages. Have you seen the black? Have you seen the sauve? Mm -hmm. Have you seen the white cabbage? That's the one we <laughs> eat normally. Have you seen the purple cabbage? Uh -huh. My dear listeners and viewers, everything is here. It is just the patience, I said, mm. that we need to put into consideration. You see the purple cabbage. Mm. It falls under a fresh vegetable. Mm. Let me imagine that's what I want. Huh? I will say purple cabbage. Then I will just give it my code. Then I will come and type in here. Purple cabbage. I will even put fresh. The word fresh, so that somebody knows uh, mm -hmm. it's a fresh purple cabbage. It's in UGX, and uh, I am selling a piece. Because normally we buy pieces from the market or the supermarket. Then my purple cabbage may be going for 5000 at times the expensive. Then my sto lost stock alert, maybe we could be at 5 uh. So we go here in VAT. You see we have 18% and we have that dash. That dash is, it doesn't go for taxes. But mark you here, I am trading on the test server. I'm not on a live one. So at times, my rates here may not come out the way we want them. Huh? But there, that's where we check. Then here you yes. will submit. But we all know that a fresh cabbage, a vegetable, does not carry 18%. Eh? Mm. So that is how we do the configuration of the different items that may be 
there. Okay. So I believe our viewers, uh, you, you are appreciating that uh, the way a service is configured may not be the way a good is configured. Most services uh, need goods <laughs> to be able to, to improve on the, quality, on the quality. Then uh, we sell it with a quality that yeah. may have some value added in exactly. it. Eh? Mm. The same applies to even the welders. Exactly. Because somebody is wondering how what, what how what how, how about the welders? How do they how do do, we, do you guys go about it on Ifris? Definitely welders buy uh, the metal and all that mm. separately, mm. but at the end of the day they are selling metallic windows, metallic doors, so they will configure the metallic windows and doors Yes, there. So these other inputs that came in handy to present the door in the format, I have found it in the, show, the, the showroom mm. and maintained in a particular mm. record here, mm. and they will equally help us when we are filing at the end of the day, yes. filing our returns. Okay. Mm. So even well does you follow the same principle. When you are configuring, you are good. You do not have to, to think that there is anything that is uh, unique, that uh, you do not have to, to follow. Everything that is done, whether it is for a service, whether it is for a good, the principle is the same, but you must master. Your business, you must know your business. If you don't know your business, you cannot configure. But exactly. when you know your business, you <laughs> can surely configure. Even when you engage a tax agent, you must encourage them to understand the kind of business that you do. Such that at the end of the day, you do not have to have issues exactly. with the person who is buying from you or with the tax authorities as well. Now, I know we, we, we are about to conclude uh, our engagement with our viewers. Now, somebody was asking about, say, the trees. They grow trees. Exactly. How do they configure that in uh, Ifris? For them, they simply grow trees. It could also cut across for people who grow agriculture, who, who grow crops rather for agricultural purposes. Mm. They grow trees, they grow cassava. How do they configure this in Ifres? Uh What happens uh, with uh, somebody who grows trees? Mm. I would imagine <coughs> at the end of the day he's selling the logs, the timber. Yes. So he has to configure the timber that he has to sell. Mm. Because this tree is growing and will become a log at the end of the day when I harvest mm. and uh, probably I need to sell. I'll be selling a log. And it depends how do I um, how do I look at my log? Mm. Am I looking at it in weedy in the time it has been in the garden? Yes. To be able to build, they know their business better. But I should imagine what they should con configure is the timber, the logs. Mm. That is uh, the, uh, the, the output that I expect. But definitely they would have these other costs. They would have um, the pesticides. They would have expenses for whatever. That can be maintained here besides. Mm -hmm. But what has to come in the system is the logs or the timber that they sell. Okay. Because once you configure it there, then that means at the time you're harvesting, we'll need to change a little bit of the way we've been doing business. Mm -hmm. As At the time of harvesting, Please input that particular harvest in the system as a stock. Mm. Exactly. <coughs> you input it as a stock so that you can be able to raise that invoice to whoever needs it. Okay. Now, somebody is also asking <coughs> they are uh, a small company that manufactures yogurt. Mm. Now, they are wondering <coughs> do they have to? configure the milk or they configure the final <coughs> product, the yogurt? That's they configure it. the yogurt oh. because it's what is going to go on the invoice. Mm. These other are inputs yes. that are mixed to get my yogurt. Mm. Mm. Okay. <coughs> so they configure the yogurt. The yogurt. They do not configure 
the end product is what they configure. Okay. Okay. <coughs> ah. How are you going to incur internet internet costs for the users of Ifris? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Like any other business. Yes. Before Ifris came in. We were using the computers. <laughs> True. We were using internet. So, in the same spirit, <coughs> whatever you incur in the production of that particular income yes. that you are going to reflect in the return mm. is an allowable expense. Yes, yes, yes. So you just wait for the income tax when you are filing my income tax at the end of the year. <coughs> Please include mm. that. But it will be on the background that whoever is supplying you the internet is giving you an, an e invoice, invoice or an e receipt, depending. Okay. So the person <coughs> must be able <coughs> to declare. Exactly, because those are expensive. The <laughs> because I can't expect somebody to be on uh, on IFRIS without internet. That is a given. <laughs> And when you tell me you bought maybe one, two, three computers, yes. I should expect it because uh, you are using the portal. Yes. And it calls for a computer. Sure. Probably you're even using system to system. You need to get some few computers for your staff uh, to be able to do the business. Mm. So it comes in handy because uh, it is an expense that relates to the business you're handling. Mm. So at the end of uh, the day, those are expenses that will be allowed eh, okay. to be reduced from that particular income mm. and at the end of the day we'll have that income that will charge to tax. So somebody is also asking yes. that uh, for tax invoices that have been issued in January yes. that are not e invoices, mm. he's wondering if he can if he returned it, can he or she be issued an invoice for the past date? If not, and I'm issued an e invoice for February, can I use it for, to file the January return? Let me start from the end. Mm. When an invoice is issued for a particular tax period, say uh, February, yes. because our system does not backdate. True. So I should imagine they may be issued for February. Mm. However, the activity actually happened in January. in January. So that means you will be patient too. Reflect it in your in February, February return, return that you will give me True. by the 15th of March. Mm. For the manual invoice, I am just sorry it's unfortunate. Our system is not allowing the invoices that are off the IFRIS platform. Mm. So whatever the system is going to allow for January, for the month of January, the return in February has to be fiscalized. So FDN is the way to go. Exactly. Your FDN rep replaced your invoice, num your invoice number, mm. and that is what you're going to use when you're filing the VAT return, mm. where the system asks for an invoice number, that is what you're going to put. Okay. Because our system is going to validate your return, mm. looking at the FDNs, looking at the nature of supply and the date it was supplied. Yes. So, and the TIN... Mm definitely of that particular person you did business with. Mm. So short of having those, then definitely the return won't validate. And once it doesn't validate, you cannot upload it onto the system and submit. So one leads to another. I think we should just and look at how we do business and change. The longer you take to submit it, you realize already 16th a penalty has come in. Exactly, then. because we don't want this penalty. It's not income that you have earned. Mm. It eats into your profits. Yes. And at times... Uh, we could even eat into your your capital, which we yes. do not uh, <coughs> encourage. Mm. So that's why we are basically with our clients to walk the journey with them. Mm. In the event that we have new initiatives that have come on board, yes. we want to see how simpler it can be to them to see that they jump on board mm. and we talk the same language, we speak the same language. Okay. Now somebody is wondering... That can any business register for IFRISH? Are there exactly, maybe sizes? Yes. They say you must have no. this turnover. No. Mm. We gazetted or the Minister of Finance gazetted VAT registered clients eh, on the 1st of uh, July 2020. However, <coughs> along the way, as I had explained, eh, these companies do not work in isolation. Yes. They deal with smaller companies. 
they supply smaller companies. Mm. And by supplying them, at times they even get services from the smaller companies. So in order to further business, we encourage whoever is in business to register. But at the background of it, it starts from you having a team. Have you registered this business? Mm -hmm. If you haven't registered it, please visit any of our one-stop centers across the country. We have about four one, four, uh, one stop, 44 one-stop centers across the country. In Kampala, there are about 12, and outside Kampala, there are about 11. Outside Kampala, we have 33. Yes. These are meant to give you services in one and at a go. If you've come when you haven't registered this business, let my colleague in URSB register your business name. Mm -hmm. Then give you this business uh, registration certificate or a company form 7 and a certificate of incorporation for a company. Mm -hmm. Then give it to the next officer who is URA to see how they can help you apply for a team. Then ultimately I have my colleague for local government or KCCA if it's in Kampala yes. to give you that trading license, that permission to um, allow you to trade where you feel. Mm. So when you are coming to IFRIS, bear in mind you have registered for taxes. That is getting that tin mm. that we give out for free. Mm. Because there is no way you are going to log on the system without a tin. Without a tin, you need Exactly. Tea. That is why I said one leads to another. And in this, it will even help us widen the tax register. True. As you come, please register and take your fair share of taxes. Mm. So that I do not keep coming on to this business alone. Mm. We have these smaller ones. Please uh, jump on board. It's healthy. Mm. As you jump on board, you will get the opportunity to do business with bigger companies because they'll appreciate the way you do business because what they'll need is an e-receipt, which you will be able to provide. Or an e-invoice for that case, if you're VAT registered. Okay. Now, somebody is also asking... What happens for the, for them? They say they deal with the public, the public sector. Yes. Local governments down there, <coughs> they get tenders to maybe collect money from uh, for, for those village markets. Yes. The Saturday markets, the mm. Thursday markets. Yes. What happens if the local authorities down there are not able to give them the e-receipt? They should. Mm. Ask me why. Why? At mm. the time we rolled out, it was clear mm. this solution uh, has come to look at clients who are doing business to business, mm. business to government, yes. business to final consumer. Mm. And when I say business to government, I am looking at the local government. True. So ultimately, we know big government is the biggest spender mm. in Uganda. True. And if it's the biggest spender, it spends in line with contracts. It's awards uh, different clients. Mm. And how are we going to tap into those different incomes that have been received by government spending? Mm. It is by government first registering. Mm. So I expect that municipal council to be on board. To issue. And I the basically am very well assured that most of them have registered for IFRIS. Because when they don't do that, mm. there will be a gap in information. Mm. I will not know which municipal council has dealt with Arthur mm -hmm. and to what tune. Mm. But when it deals with Arthur and gives that E invoice, invoice, then I am seeing it at my central invoicing system here. Mm. So I expect Arthur to reflect that very invoice when he's giving me his return yes. to reflect it in his income or otherwise in his outcome otherwise in his expenses mm. <coughs> okay now somebody's also asking about our friends in Chikuvo. yes that how are you going uh, how are you going to make the Chikuwa people in downtown to adopt this system? <laughs> That's very good. Eh? Yes. We made a start um, slightly after the lockdown and we got hold of uh, our good friends in Chikubo mm. through their leaders eh? yes. and we started preaching that same gospel mm. of Ifris because we were preaching it still in line with our DTS on the other hand, because we know 
Chikubo is a hub of business. Mm. That is where people go to buy and put in their shops, put in their supermarkets. Yes. So we were preaching that too together. So far we are somewhere with information dissemination. Maybe what we are, what, what we are remaining with is their implementation. Are they using it? Mm. That is the only bit that is remaining. Yes. But at least with the information dissemination, they are aware that IFRIS is there and we have taken them through, some of them. So what we need to do is to maybe do more of scouting eh? and see what invoices they are issuing, <clears throat> what receipts they are issuing to see that we can bring them on board. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, so that somebody was asking almost the same question, but I believe this has been answered because we're not only targeting the, the, the established businesses. I know. We are targeting every Ugandan who is in business, including our brothers and sisters in Chikubo, those who are downtown in Mbale, whether in Soroti, we are targeting all those people. Now, somebody also wonders, when are we taking the practical sessions to them up country? Uh, what has happened? What is happening up country? Maybe it's just unfortunate because we have regional offices throughout the country mm. which are manned by regional managers. Mm. And these are competent people who have done a good job. So I just appeal to that client in case they have um, difficulty in doing any of the different steps we have demonstrated. Yes. Please get in touch with the regional manager of your region mm. and see how they can help you either to handhold you or to address the challenge that you have. Mm. But at least we have um, done it across the country and uh, it's not basically in Kampala, it has been spread out. So we have our ambassadors, the regional managers are uh, doing a good job. <coughs> so for that client, <coughs> In the event that uh, they may have a challenge, eh? feel free to walk into our stations uh, up there, wherever you are. We have, li uh, we have liaison stations mm -hmm. across the country. Just walk in and see how uh, we can handhold you. We have staff yes. who have gone through the training and they are hands-on. Mm -hmm. They can basically do what we have done here mm -hmm. for you. So by the time you leave, uh, you will be comfortable in how to do the configuration and the stocking in mm. equally and the invoicing maybe plus the credit and debit notes huh? mm. in case they come in handy okay so we want to encourage our clients they make use of our offices yes these are your offices the rent that pays them is your tax exactly the the beauty they are the reason we exist exactly, exactly. now when you when you shy away from utilizing these resources then it, it is not fair to you. So be encouraged to walk into the office at any time when you feel, not just if risk, by the way, you might want any other service. So feel exactly. free to walk in and then you will be supported. Exactly. Maybe, could you be having some parting shots? Um, not really some parting shots, but uh, mm. I would like to first of all thank the public Yes. Because uh, the cooperation we have got from them, they've actually cooperated. It is not, um, it is not, it is not that hard for us huh, to speak to our clients and they listen. They've actually cooperated because we are basically basing these initiatives on uh, the domestic revenue mobilization strategy. We are basically telling Ugandans, look here, as a country. We are trying to see how we can mobilize revenue, mobilize resources domestically within the country so that we deal, with, so that we do not rely uh, more on, um, on foreign support. Because foreign support ultimately is expensive because it comes with a cost. This is a loan, however soft it may be, but it could be a loan huh? and it needs to be paid back and maybe there's some interest or some, whatever it is, there are some sanctions to that particular facility we have got. Why don't we mobilize resources domestically? Because we have what it takes to do, mobilize them. So I would like to thank our clients and the listeners and those who may not be on right now 
for having accepted to cooperate with us because we've just got our out of COVID and uh, these are the same clients we are speaking to. Fine COVID has hit each of us in any way, but we have decided to keep standing mm -hmm. and keep moving. So I would like to thank our clients for the cooperation, for paying the taxes, True. for cooperating with us, for accepting to get on any initiative we bring, mm -hmm. because it's for the good of us. Mm -hmm. It's for the good of our children, the good of our country, for national development. Yes. So ultimately, that small coin you put in has an impact to your country. Mm -hmm. So let us keep doing it. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let us keep doing it. Nera, nera, nera. So that we can <laughs> develop our country. Yes. What you call it, nera. Okay. Uh, our viewers, we thank you so much for the time that you have spent listening and watching us on uh, URA TV. We appreciate, like my colleague has said, all your efforts and we thank you for supporting us by filing your returns, by paying your taxes, by doing so much for us. We truly, truly appreciate. We want to remind you that IFRIS is here, IFRIS is uh, not going away soon, it is the thing now. We are encouraging those who are not yet registered to please register and begin using the facility as much as you can for your own good, for our own good, and for the good of our country. May God bless you so much as we develop Uganda together. Thank you so much.